I'm so excited to spotlight our instruction on mathematics for an in-depth look at all the ways our students engage and learn math concepts in our classrooms. Math is the art of being puzzled and unpuzzling yourself. You begin with a problem that you don't understand, then using the skills from your toolbox, higher order thinking skills, and teacher guidance, you slowly begin to see how all of the pieces fit together. That is the beauty of math. Two of our current Board of Trustees goals are specific to closing the academic and opportunity gaps in mathematics. One goal targets third grade math, which is a key metric that indicates if a student is on course for academic success. And the other board goal focuses on Algebra 1, which research tells us is the number one predictor of students graduating from high school. Across the district, we want all our ISD students to develop into skilled mathematicians using our teachers' intentional instruction that builds on an understanding of numeracy, computational skills, and algebraic reasoning. These main concepts are foundational, which means they build over time through sequenced and intentional instruction in each grade from pre-K through senior year. And like our other curriculum areas, Richardson ISD instruction in mathematics is based on the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, or TEKS. Numeracy is a student's ability to understand, interpret, communicate, and work with numbers. Grasping numeracy spans grade levels and covers many topics. Computational skills include addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, not just of whole numbers, but also fractions and decimals. Algebraic reasoning is the use of operations and their inverses to find unknown quantities. Development of algebraic reasoning starts at a very early age. Add four and three, then put the seven, then bring down the 15, then put the minus, then put the equal sign, and then put the We believe teaching about the relationships between operations and how numbers work together helps our youngest learners develop more complex ways of thinking as they work through more complex problems. When a letter is next to a number, that means multiplication, so you will divide the four in order to get the letter by itself, which gives you a B. Then what you do over here, you have to do here. So you will divide four here, which gives you 12. Then you bring down your symbol and you have B is equal to or less than 12. Algebraic reasoning permeates all of mathematics. The first thing you do when you have an equation with parentheses is to distribute. Over the side, you have 8x and 9x, so you combine it. You have negative 1x when you subtract 9x from 8, and then you just bring down the remaining. You take the negative 1x over to the 3x because you want the x's on its own. In our bilingual classroom, students are learning mathematics in both English and Spanish. Because of the use of manipulatives and hands-on problem solving, math is one of the first subjects where our bilingual students begin receiving instruction and developing skills in English. In RSD bilingual classrooms, mathematics instruction is spent half of the time in English and half of the time in Spanish. Making sure to develop concepts in a student's native language while promoting bilingualism and the learning of English. ¿Qué hizo? ¿Qué fue lo que hizo? Sacó el área de... ¿Ya vieron? Se los voy a enseñar. Sacó el área de set 1. Miren, set 1, set 2, set 3. Y sacó el área. Muy bien, 56. Entonces, ¿qué hicimos? ¿Qué fue lo que hizo Ángel? ¿Qué fue lo que hizo Ángel? Para... Determinar, determine, to find, right, to tell. He was able to use multiplication to find the area. Can you tell me what we're doing today in math? We're doing area. You're doing area. So how do you find the area of an object? By multiplying 15 times 6. I see their needs, how they like to learn. I take in consideration their, their background, and um, I bring that into my lesson. Um, that's why I like to teach bilingual students, because I can relate to them. And I just try to make it fun. When we think about a student's development in mathematics, we know that our learners go through various stages in their ability to understand math. With our youngest mathematicians, we understand the importance of concrete objects to help develop numeracy. 
For example, that one cube represents the physical number one. These tried and true methods to teach math to young learners allow them to make connections between what numbers are and what they can represent in the world around them. As students develop their numeracy skills, computational skills, and an understanding of math, they shift to more paper and pencil tasks. Manipulatives are still in the picture, but this shift just means our students begin to be able to take what they have learned, put it into a mathematical equation, and solve it. Teachers will often return to manipulatives to help students develop new skills and concepts, but we are now learning the skills involved with some serious computation. This is all part of the process that allows our students to develop the abstract reasoning skills needed for algebra, geometry, calculus, and the higher levels of mathematics. Let's take a peek into one of our junior high classrooms. I try to challenge them to, rather than saying it's hard, saying that it's new. Because a lot of the things that they're seeing a lot of really abstract math when they get into Algebra 1. But then once you get through the unit and then at the end of it they're like, oh wow, it wasn't that bad. But at the beginning, just because you're seeing it and it looks intimidating, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're stuck there. It's going to be like that forever. And my big thing is I like the kids working together. I really like it when they're talking through the math. There's always going to be so many ways to get to the answer. Beauty of math is that there's so many different ways to learn it and approach it. Middle school math is where students will really begin the deep dive into problem solving. High school mathematics is what prepares students for college mathematics, careers in mathematics, and real world problem solving. Depending on my career choice, I may not be factoring polynomials in my daily life, but how students in our classrooms are learning to solve complex math problems is preparing them to solve complex problems later in life. It's about critical thinking. It's about uh, when I'm presented with a problem, not literally a problem, but a problem in life, a problem in your job or whatever, to get you the perseverance to continue moving forward, but also potentially coming at it from another angle. And as far as calculus is concerned, I mean, this is the base level for most collegiate math. Most majors are going to require some kind of calculus. My wife teaches third grade. And so I kind of see what they are learning. I look at that and I'm like, oh my gosh, like fractions. We still have to deal with this. I mean, we still have to understand improper fractions. They start introducing slope between like fifth and sixth grade. And slope is what? Derivative. Derivative. Finding slope is rise over run, but algebraically we take the derivative of stuff to find slope at a point when it's not constant. So really what we're doing is just honing in skills algebraically and then throwing in what we call calculus, which is gonna be, it's the method in which they go about it. The 21st century workforce is evolving constantly as technology advances on an almost daily basis. The jobs of the future will necessitate people who have the ability to think outside the box. The math classes RSD students take help prepare them for jobs that don't exist yet. We believe strongly in the parent and school partnership. And parents, there are many small ways you can help support your students in math at home. Number one, for our youngest learners, talking about math at home can have a huge impact. It can be as simple as counting clouds, sorting the silverware, or guessing how many steps it will take to walk to the bedroom. This is especially crucial for our young children who need to feel comfortable just thinking about math and seeing that it is a part of their daily life. Number two, have your child teach you math. Once they have to explain it to someone else, they're having to consolidate knowledge and try new ways of explaining it. This will help them deepen their understanding. Number three, don't underestimate the power of flashcards and helping students to learn their facts. When students have their math facts down, they can take that energy used for computation and use it towards solving the multi-step problems. If you have questions, please connect with your child's teachers. They know your child and can help give you ideas on specific strategies to extend learning while at home. Thank you for spending some time keeping tabs on RSD and learning more about how we approach mathematics and how it lays a foundation for students to excel in a variety of areas, including science and engineering.